Guys, just do not get facts from us. <laughs> Never ever. This is purely entertainment. This is not factual. This Please do not take any of that. pure entertainment. I actually love you more than I did last week. Are we closer to engagement now? Because we had a good week. Oh. Shh. Don't tell mum. <laughs> Hello, Hello and welcome, welcome to, to Don't, Don't Tell Mum. My name's Barney. And I'm Jamie. And this is the third most listened to parenting podcast in... I can't... <laughs> <laughs> no way, it's Sri Lanka! <gasps> Sri Lanka, we just spoke about that as well. I, You are not on it today, are you? No. You're a bit flaggish. Can I actually, can I just look up my symptoms? What? Yeah, I feel like I need to Google my symptoms and what's happening. What are you on about? What's it? You what? You just lethargic? Hang on. Lazy. Day, That's your symptom. Day two Lazy. of period. In day two, you may feel lethargic, a tugging of the uterus, and possible burning sensation in your bum hole because you're a knob. <laughs> On the second day of your period, you might still have heavy bleeding, cramps, or stomach pain. Bleeding is usually heaviest during the first two days of the period, but everyone is different during heavy flow. First of all, never Google your symptoms. On average, you'll Google lose will always tell you five you're dying. to twelve teaspoons of blood during your period but some bleed more all right all right all right all right stop talking about blood moodiness Jesus. you might feel irritable so careful men bloating fatigue headaches there you go okay fascinating thank you so much I for really all of that, uh, that fascinating insight from mm-hmm. you jamie lisa mm-hmm. it's fun it's all fun and games people are going to enjoy it it's so. very summery today thanks very much i feel summery even though it's raining thank you it's raining outside what do you mean thank you i appreciate that's what I mean. I appreciate you. I appreciate you're looking good. That's what I mean. I appreciate the fact that you your look, brain is you, falling out of your ears. Are you trying to listen to a musical now? Yeah. Don't tell mom I'm having such a good time. So don't tell mom. People okay. have switched off now. Okay, right. For those of you who are still here, welcome to Don't Tell Mom. Me and Jamie are going to chat all things uh, parenting. We're going to chat all things, well, actually, I've got a bunch of things Family, to talk about couples. Today. It's actually more couples' sides. So if you guys do have um, a friendly couple that you know and love and you w- want them to listen to the podcast... <laughs> Please do us a favor and share it with a pal because we are trying to expand it to couples and not just families. Right, so let's kick things off the usual way. The usual suspects as we begin with what is new with Rocket. Now, one of the things that I've got to talk about is the fact that he's still falls asleep eating at lunchtime because it's still we're still in this weird period of his life where we don't know i still fall asleep eating yeah he will never grow out of that i once had to get tested because they thought something was wrong with me and mum was like she's literally just bored i think that it's because we're still figuring out if he's gonna have a little nap before lunch or we have to try and wait it out and then he eats lunch and then goes for a big nap which is obviously ideal but a lot of the time especially when he goes to nursery and we pick him up they're like yeah he fell asleep during lunch like literally mid mid mouthful if he, he that's just if went, he oh. eats like we actually had a party the other day for barney's birthday and i said to everyone i was like i don't even know if frock has e- eaten but everybody was like you know taking a piece everyone was of giving him a bit of pizza of, bit of, of their so he pizza he was walking around the whole day nibbling there's me being like oh my god I haven't sat him down for a real meal and then when I did try to sit him down to even just sleep he didn't want to know he was like no 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 I wanted to play because we brought the slide in to entertain the kids all his friends were there so it's really hard isn't it I can't wait till his third birthday because he'll probably be just coming out of the naps and then we can we can almost like plan the day better around his schedule but yeah he definitely is still doing his little naps and he gets so grumpy after he wakes up from a nap as well I wonder where he yeah. gets that from he says go away a lot at the moment every time i go out to him he's like go away yeah go away go away daddy go away mummy oh, dude like i'm just trying to give you a yogurt and he's like go away so he's learning and adapting and going through his no phase, going through his go away phase. He's going through like, it's weird. He's going through like a grumpy teenager phase right now. Like, yeah. go away. That's why they call it teenagers. Oh my God. Oh, just, an actual just thing. So enlightened. Um, mm-hmm. And also what comes with the grumpiness is like him really wanting to do what he wants to do. And if he doesn't, he literally throws his toys out the pram. Like he has this obsession with going downstairs now. Go downstairs. Yeah, Even downstairs. when he's downstairs, he's like, downstairs. I'm like, we are downstairs. <laughs> we can't go any lower, mate, unless we dig a hole. Like, come on. He's I'll put so... you downstairs and in you the tr- basement. And you try as a parent just to keep really, really calm in those situations. You can't lose your temper. But there was an episode recently in the family where I absolutely, I didn't know where I was in my career, what I'm doing. I felt very like, 
as everybody does, we all go through those like low points. And um, I had crisis. a really sad moment, and the empathy Rocket showed us was incredible. Yeah, that's very cute. He I saw like, you crying. He and saw he me ran crying. Over but and I was like, like, I haven't cried like that in yeah, that a was... very long time. And then we learned later that day that it was the first day of your period as well. Like, you didn't even know at that point. And I was like, ah, oh, this explains a lot. It was either that or pregnancy. And I was just about to do a pregnancy test. And I was like, oh, yeah. Because the thing is, the symptoms, if you're going into parenting or you're pregnant at the moment, you will notice the symptoms between having your period and being pregnant are so similar. You get all the same symptoms. So the amount of money that pregnancy... If yeah, like pregnant care or whatever they're called. Because the thing is, is clear like, blue. For instance, for instance, you do a pregnancy test and it's positive. Then you go out and you buy seven more just to double check that. Yeah, you're, and, and, and like then ten quid each. You can't even see the doctor for the first like twelve weeks of your pregnancy. Did you know that? Wow. Do you remember twelve weeks? So you're walking around not knowing if it's actually ectopic or anything like serious any issues, with it, yeah, any exactly. issues and stuff so you're walking around going I'm just going to do another test it might have gone now like all these kind of like worries that you have as a mother with the hormones raging as well I really think they should change that with the national health care I think you should get in there earlier you should, get, you should be able to get your first pregnancy test free I feel like that should at least be a thing and if you want to get another one to double check that's on you but you should be able to get your first pregnancy test free yeah, and then... Like, as in, like, you know, you and then can, they can time think, it so you, like, every you six months the, I feel renews. like you can at the doctor surgery, you can get it for free because they always ask you, are you pregnant? But at the same time, you... Um, that's a great business strategy. Start a pregnancy... <laughs> test company. Test company. I wonder how much it actually costs them to make a pregnancy test because they sell them for a tenner each and I they bet like the they get made at, in such bulk as well that I imagine that they probably like charge nothing. Do you think they use the same kind of like method like the as COVID to make stuff. COVID? And COVID tests were what? Like... A but that was quid. different. That was like the drops. Yeah, and obviously it's it's testing for certain things in your in your pee, right? That's what the way the pregnancy tests work. Yeah, pee and then you're so searching your for what, certain levels COVID, of the estrogen. It? Is it? It's measuring certain levels of estrogen, right? To then I be able to tell. I still find it mad how I had COVID and never tested positive as one of those. Good a- way to glide past the question, Jamie. There, you weren't listening to me, way because you were listening. Yeah, you were concentrating on the next thing you were going to say and not the question I was asking you. My topic of conversation at this podcast episode during this podcast episode i should say is the screen time conundrum something that all parents fear something that all parents want to be rid of asap rocky but screen time is a thing and we have to just become connected with it it's a part of our lives children are gonna have screens at some point in their life but where do you draw the line and what do you think are the positives versus the negatives that come out of having screen time jamie give me your thoughts give me the cliff notes i'm a very pro iPad user. <gasps> now, is that because you want time to like be able to get your shit done while he is basically distracted on the iPad? Or is this like constructive? Like, tell me. I, I notice him singing along and tapping and, and clapping. His rhythm gets better by watching it. He learns songs. He learns words. He learns a lot of stuff on there that he watches. The one thing that we have said in the past in the podcast is if you have it where it's like the kid's YouTube and he's just stro- scrolling, he can see things that don't you benefit don't the parent. See. Yeah, obviously, like, for instance, that kid that was running around and throwing things off the side and going, ah, mommy, no, see? Yeah, Like, yeah, those yeah. kind of things. And I notice he does do that quite a lot. Videos. Yeah, but the, why are they on there? I know, and why are they on allowed YouTube to be on kids? there? It's essentially like they're trying to show you how a kid should behave by showing you a badly behaved kid. But when a kid's really young and sees that... He thinks that's normal. Yeah. And there's just, a mob response to it. But I feel like something that I've hammered home, especially with... His grandparents who are concerned, oh, well, he has access to an iPad and all this kind of stuff. And I think that, yes, as long as you're monitoring, monitoring what they're watching, but also YouTube videos nowadays or kids YouTube videos, I should really say, they're so much more educational than they have ever been. We grew up on with Sesame Street. We grew up with the Flintstones, uh, Tom and Jerry. It was all catered towards entertaining kids rather than educating kids. Mm-hmm. Sesame Street... A bit of both, I would say. Mm -hmm. But for sure, it was about 
entertaining and I feel like nowadays it's all educational. Miss Rachel is teaching you how to use your mouth, how to use expressions, how to use your hands. Blippi is teaching you how, no, actually Blippi's just really annoying. Um, Pepper's teaching you how to be a brat. Um, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but anyway, mm -hmm. there are a lot. There's like number blocks, there's alpha blocks, there's Miss alpha Rachel. Blocks. There's Yeah, that's like, um, they teach you letters and things and number blocks teaches you about numbers. I still can't believe how incredible Stillwater is. Stillwater's a banger. Teaches kids how to control their breathing and meditate and stay calm in situations and understand emotions. That's mm -hmm. a banger. Uh, having spoken to a lot of parents who have come onto this podcast about it, about screen time, about devices and stuff, every parent uses it. Whether or not they admit or not, every parent gives their kid an iPad at some point. Either if it's to give themselves a bit of time, and that's okay. If you want to go to the toilet and not be interrupted while you're sat there, you can give your kid an iPad. But you know what drives me mad, I find, about society? Before I had a child, I will pull my hands up and say I you was were judgy. judgy. I was as well. And, and now we have a kid, I'm very less judgmental, but then you have people that, I'm not going to say any names, but we have <laughs> people that we've met in the past that are very oh your kid can't eat sugar or your kid can't and and the problem is 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 we're not we don't judge them if they did or if they didn't but they will judge us for, because we gave our child like a, a chocolate bar a chocolate bar or an ice lolly or something you know and it's and, and and the problem is is it's like you are the problem you just need to not care and just let pe parents do what they're going to do because think about how we were brought up you had ice creams, right? You had chocolate. My mum would give me a bowl of rice and that would be my, my supper. Like, it was never forced on me to eat anything, but she was very much like, eat everything, try everything once. That's one thing she did try. Yeah. Which goes, if you don't like it from that first taste, because you always had those kids at school, especially at the age Rocket is now. He's at this age where he won't even contend to eat it. Is that the word? Contend? He, you will give it to him. He's like, no, no. And I'm like, you haven't even tried it. He's like, no. You won't attempt to eat it. Attempt to eat it. <laughs> this is why yeah, we do morning try. podcasts. It's our first <laughs> afternoon podcast and I'm never doing this again because I am so freaking exhausted. <laughs> oh by 2 God. p.m. I am a zombie and we started recording today at 2 p.m. So yeah, and by four o'clock I'm asleep. Yeah, it's true. To be it's fair, good. I've actually mentioned the trifecta when it comes to content in kids of Miss Rachel, Blippi and Pepper. Who's the most annoying out of the three? Blippi, Pepper or Miss Rachel. Rachel? Who for you is the most annoying out of the three? I just don't like Blippi's voice. Come on, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to jump in a ball pit yeah. 50 times. I have I'm to like, say Pepper's oh, wow. the most annoying for me just because of the repetition of hearing it because... Jamie, not it's Jamie, Rockets watched Pepper a lot. And I'm less like, less oh. Pepper and more Holly and Ben, which is the same voices. But I don't mind Holly and Ben because the story's a bit better. Pepper's just yeah. whinging. We just don't really, I don't time. ever turn Pepper on. Have you ever put Pepper on for Rocket unless he's swiping and seeing? You know, if he, he shouts to me is. like, Pepper, I'm like, okay, fine, we'll watch an episode of oh, Pepper. See, like, I don't. don't. I'm like, no, 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 still water. <laughs> still water is great. You do hammer still water home quite significantly. I would say that Bluey is a winner at the moment. <gasps> Bluey! Dude, Bluey's is such, great. And Disney bought the rights to it. At every yeah. episode, I get a bit emotional with that it's a bit like Stillwater I cry it is an emotional show because they it, you know what it is it's because they really focus well. on the parents not the kid the kid is Bluey Bluey's the main character but there's always a Who's lesson to be bingo. learned Bingo and Bluey and then mum and dad um, the mum and dad are they just the mum and dad always so like fun. learn a lesson as well which is really nice so the parents kind of link to that and one of the best things is that it's it's a guy who based all of the stories in Bluey on like his adventures family? that he had with his family. And so the dad is based on the dad, on the guy that wrote it. I would it. love you to one day create yourself a show and I can do the sound. Oh my God. It would be awesome. What Instead of turning it? it into a book, create your own version of that for the British TV. How much do you think it costs to like hire animators? So I that heard, must be so expensive. I heard the first episode of that. Of Bluey? He, yeah, he got investment to do the first pilot and then he went what around was it, and like shot it grand around. Or Something. Let's have a look. Let's <gasps> okay, have a look. you look while I entertain. So um, I've had some funny parenting stories that I've been searching the World Wide Web for. And uh, I've got a funny one here that you should listen to, I think, because this is about whether or not you should really cry wolf as a kid. Because, you know, the boy who cried wolf, a very famous story. But, you know, some people take it a little bit yeah. too far as per this person. Oh, God. Here we go. Someone anonymously said... I lied to my parents when I was a kid about hearing voices. 
At this point in my life, I genuinely don't know why I did this, but the lie got super involved. I ended up seeing a neurologist and getting brain scans, but weirdly, they did in fact find unusual brain activity in the places that make complete sense for auditory hallucinations. Oh, wow. Once I went on medication, I pretended that I was cured and my future scans seemed to back that up. I'm still so confused about it. Like they can't make up an EEG reading and I've never hallucinated in my life. So what are the odds of me making this shit up and it actually showing up in a scan? It's been 20 years since and it still keeps me up at night. How mental is that? Basically faked hallucinating stuff to get attention from the kids, from her parents, sorry. And then they sent her to hospital like a mental hospital where she had scans and they were like yeah it seems like you would have hallucinations with the activity that's going on in your brain and she was like but the hallucination is her actually she was lying faking it she was just faking it when you really think about it the things that were highlighted in her brain yeah that showed that she would have auditory auditory hallucinations that's what's confusing her she's like how did this happen it happened because she was thinking about the problem that was happening. So it, those were the highlights. So do you think that there actually is like some element of your, you talking your brain into showing something? Of course. We can manipulate ourselves all the time. You know, oh my brain. God, can you run on water? <laughs> um, okay, so for the bluey thing. Are you one of the Fantastic Four, Jamie? Tell me. Are you Susan Storm? The bluey pilot, it was never allowed to be on TV. Can <gasps> you believe that? Why? I don't know, but it became two billion pounds, my shit. Dude, Bluey's worth two billion. Yeah. What? That is. Oh mad. my days. Good on you, Aussies. He's great, and I love the Australian sense of humour as well. So they said, yeah, the pilot episode is an experiment. And sometimes the result of an experiment is this could work, but we need to change some stuff. So that's why it never aired. Uh, I really want to know how much investment it took to do the first Bluey. Episode. I read somewhere that it was like thirty something grand, like thirty nine thousand dollars. That's what I dollars. read somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure that 90% of that went on animators. the lost pilot found, they said. I have another story for you. And I want to know what you would do in this situation. Because as a parent, I feel like there's a lot of mixed bag feelings going around here. But oh my God. When my oldest kid was a baby, mm -hmm. my husband and I, we were then teenagers at the time. So they had kids very, very young. We took him to a park so that my younger siblings could play. There was a group of kids there who were assholes to put it lightly and we'd had problems with them before they were throwing whatever they could find on the floor at other kids mm -hmm. my husband and i had yelled at them to leave the other kids alone and i guess it kind of pissed them off one of them then took a handful of whatever was on the ground and i don't even know what it was and threw it straight at my sleeping baby's face in the car seat i've never seen my husband swing so fast in my entire life the police were then called and my husband was arrested but thankfully, he was let out after a weekend because based on witness reports and the fact that he was under 18 still. Well, meant dad. That he could be, yeah, because they were teenagers, these teenage parents. The other, guy's no, the other guy's nose was broken and my husband was covered in bruises because they all laid into him after 